Hey, and welcome back to another Revit video. In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to stairs, which there's a lot to stairs, which is why we're going to break it up into a number of videos to hopefully make it a little bit easier, not only for me, but for you learning. Uh, there's quite a lot to stairs again. So here we go, getting into it now. But before we get into it, if at any point in this video, you happen to learn something, and this is maybe the type of video you like, then demolish that like button. It really helps you out a lot. Also consider subscribing. That does as well. Okay, getting into it now, stairs. I'm in just a basic Revit project, nothing special here, template, nothing. Okay, we can find stairs in the architecture tab, and then here we go, we have stairs right here. And there's really nothing special about this because we have to start by clicking the stair button. We do this, we are now in the stairs. And at this point, there's a ton of settings, all of which I will cover eventually, but this is just an introduction. So when it comes to an introduction, what are the, what are the few things we need to take into account? Well. By default, we're asked to model the run of the stair. And so by that means uh, the default also is straight. We are simply going to click and we will start working with a straight run of stair. And this is all dependent on, of course, let me zoom in here. This is all dependent on the settings that you have in the instance properties. And this is over here. We are just by default going from level one to level two, and that happens to be 10 feet. And I, you can look at this from a 3D view, uh, elevations, whatever it might be. But we can clearly see level 1 and level 2, the difference is 10 feet. Cool. That's easy to know. And from there, we can see the desired stair height is, in fact, 10 feet. And that's going to just match the level, assuming you haven't set or changed some of these offsets. Okay, that's fine. And so whenever I click here, I can see, yeah, we're going to get some help. And not only that, uh, but we can literally put this wherever we want. And we can see that the remaining risers that we have left and the amount that we have placed here. And all of this is based on my default stair settings. Again, we're just using default. So the default is a seven inch rise, and then we have an 11 inch tread or run. And in this case, it's gonna take all of these 11 inches and add that up and basically give us our length and stair. And uh, all of the length is not necessarily based on however many treads I have, it's actually the number of treads I'll ultimately have is based on, uh, of course, the desired height of the stair, which is the level difference and the max height that I have for my risers, which is actually seven inches. So it's going to basically take that and determine how many treads I will ultimately have. And this is where the number of risers remaining and currently modeled is going to be shown here. And that's going to be right there at the bottom of the stair. So a number of things that we can do before I even actually model the stair, we can determine where this location line is. The default is center. And maybe I want this to be on the run left or run right. If I set this to run right, you can see where it actually is uh, the, with the support being even further beyond that right. So I, I typically like to, you know, the center's fine, nothing wrong with that. But um, if you want to determine the exact placement of where the edge of the stair will be, I would obviously choose the exterior support. And you can see this is really nice. It's giving me kind of that in point, that in line to draw and actually place my stair. This is kind of similar to uh, if you were to draw a wall with the finished face exterior or interior, you're basically drawing that from that very edge, which is nice and easy to do. So regardless of how we draw the stair, we can put it at any angle, anywhere we want, but let's draw it straight. And I'm just gonna draw a few risers in here. So that's great. And so this is telling me that I have 10 risers and I still have more to do. Basically, I have not gotten all the way up to my next level. And the next way to know that, how would I know that, is just clicking anywhere else. And clicking anywhere else again, we're going to use this right support. So I'm just going to click somewhere way out here. And you can see Revit is really smart because it still tells me how many uh, risers I have created and then how many I have left in this run to get me up to the next level. And it's also smart in a sense to where it's going to draw the default landing based on where I draw the stair. And of course that is completely dependent on where I draw the stair. And you can see <laughs> by default also the stair uh, landing width is going to match the current width of the stair itself. So we can see the actual run width is four feet or three feet. I can't even read. So that's three feet. Uh, if I change this to four feet, what's going to happen is whenever I draw this next stair is it's going to be four feet wide. Now 
Revit is not smart enough <laughs> because we can see that the landing goes from three feet to four feet because it's just taking the width of my first run to my second run. That, whatever, it's just good to know. Uh, I can also set an offset in here. I've actually never had to use this or wanted to use this, but there might be a good reason if you have a, a specific offset you want to maintain. So if I put two feet here, that just means that the stair is going to be drawn two feet from where I'm actually placing and starting to draw the stair, which totally fine. Uh, I don't like that necessarily. Um, I can actually choose to not have an automatic landing if I just want to just simply draw the second run of the stair. And if I do that, I'll just have my second run of the stair. Cool. That's all very simple stuff. Um, but at that point, I obviously need to actually, I, I like to keep the automatic landing because it's, saves me an extra step or two and so i just have this by default and it really doesn't matter what I, where i put it i'm going to get my landing just like that so okay I, this is pretty great it's easy um, i'm matching the desired height uh, i'm getting up to level two um, but something else i can actually extend this farther you know for some reason i want to go beyond that i don't know um, this is not necessarily the way i would do it but what i can do is i can continue to drag and add more uh, risers here and what's going to happen is that you can see i have the 18 plus one so what is this telling me this is telling me that i have 18 risers that i need to have to get to level two and because i'm currently set at level two i'm just going to get a plus one as in the 18 is what i needed but i've added an extra one so i'm basically going beyond my top extent now if for some reason i come in here and set the top offset to something else let's say seven inches higher to give me something else that i need then i actually you can see that the desired number of risers is going to be 19, and so that changes to 19. And so I'm actually hitting uh, the extents of my stair constraints over here. Now, I don't want to do that because I have no reason to extend beyond the top of level two, uh, but this will work. So, okay, what other basic default options do we have here? Well, um, if I click railing, it's going to, whenever I finish drawing the stair, it's going to place a railing, and by default, it will be on the treads and it will use just this default railing. You may not want to use that one. You may want to place it on stringers. Uh, that's kind of up to you. I much prefer to put it on stringers because that's typically where, if we're talking egress stairs, uh, that's typically where you're going to have your railing. And default, I you may or may not like that. It doesn't matter. You also might just not want to have a railing put on your stairs by default, which that's totally up to you as well. Now, for the sake of this, I'm going to put this on stringers, press OK. and so. That's cool. I can also come in here and if I just drew this backwards for some reason, I can flip the stair easily. And all this does is it doesn't actually move the stair, but it's taking uh, my bottom here to the top and then flipping that to where this is now the bottom up to the top. And the arrow is going to indicate where you start and then where you end, which is really great. It's kind of easy, easy stuff to know. Um, something else that we will look into eventually is the different types of stairs that we can draw. We've got a stair, we've got a couple of spirals. Uh, we've got a couple winders and then we can create from sketch these are all be separate videos so don't worry about that um, definitely be sure to check those out for sure but i also have runs and which is what i i used to draw this whole stair i only use runs of stair runs uh, but i also have landings that i can actually add after the fact or later and then supports and so we're going to look at those completely different uh, in future videos so don't worry about that either um, finally we have basic other basic options that we're expected to see with any Revit element, and that is phasing. Of course, I can change the phase of this entire stair. I can't change this the phase of a specific run, unfortunately. So if you wanted to split up this run versus that run being existing versus new construction, then you would have to make them separate stairs, which is not the end of the world. Okay, so with this done, I can hit the green check mark. And we're good to go and we can see okay yeah we have our up and this is telling me up i'm starting at the bottom going up and i can see yeah i'm getting my stairs it's complete i have my my landing everything just as i was expecting and then i have the railings drawn here as well on top of the treads which is great now of course we have lots of settings that go into that after the fact that we can look back into but i can actually click the obviously the whole stair and i can see yeah this is all the settings that I just saw, uh, but I can tab select each one of these runs to get uh, specific information. And we, we'll look into this, what the specific information is later, but I can choose to begin with the riser and end with the riser. I can simply uncheck these and uh, it's going to actually break the stair, but it's gonna edit the stair in a sense that it will now no longer begin with a riser. Okay, 
cool stuff. I like, you know, by default, it's good to do that. Um, also, we can see that I actually still have the option of flipping the stair outside the sketch. And that's just this arrow right here. At the very top of the stair, I can just click this arrow and it will flip the entire stair again, just like we were if we were editing those stairs. Cool, really easy. Now, I, what I can always do, and I don't necessarily recommend this um, because stairs are a bit finicky, is that I can always come in here and change my base and uh, top level or offsets in like basically after the fact, after I've uh, completed the stair. So I can come in here and then again change that to seven inches if I wanted to basically add another riser. So what's gonna happen here is, yeah, it's gonna tell me I've got an error, all this, whatever, um, but what it's gonna do is not add that riser for me. So I have this setting here, but if I come into the stair and edit the stair, I can see I actually need one more here. And the way you can determine that is it's gonna tell you the desired number of risers here by default. I don't like to change this because it's taking the calculation that we talked about before with the offsets and the risers and for the stair and giving me that number. And then below that, you can see that it's literally reporting as in it's grayed out that particular number of risers. And if that's the case, I just simply need to add one more. And again, we can simply do that, boom. And my 19 is exactly what I would expect to see. I don't see 18 plus one, I see that 19. So cool, that's, that's very easy to do. Finally, a couple other things that I can do without going into the actual stairs, of course, uh, let's select this run. I can freely change the run width, and that's very simple to do, very easy. I can even change it here with this dimension, but I can change that to three, which is great. I can even, again, change it back to four or five if I want to with this simple dimension. I even have the option of, I can, of course, move the whole stair, which I wouldn't recommend. Also, if I wanted to go back into the sketch, uh, instead of physically moving this with the move tool, I can actually drag this around and it's smart enough. Now I can't do that per run outside of the sketch or outside of the, the stair itself, but uh, that's just something else good to know. So with that, we have looked at a basic introduction on stairs. There's a ton more that we're gonna get into looking at specific parameters, instance versus type uh, versus uh, the makeup and actual build and type of the stair. Uh, we'll look at railings completely separately because, oh my gosh, railings are quite, quite something. And I honestly don't like to start modeling my stair with railings. I prefer to come back and put them on later, but uh, we will definitely go through all of that. You can see that there's a, a multi-story stair option, and we even have the option of connecting multiple levels. If I choose you know, to look at the stair as a whole, I can actually connect multiple levels. If I wanted to make this a multi-level stair, uh, we will definitely get in that too. Uh, that is something completely different. And it takes a different mindset if you're going to work with multi-story stairs versus just a basic stair. And then finally, we'll get into some of the documentation, uh, basically how you would want to display or document uh, your stair, uh, because that really does matter. Um, and some of the visibility graphics behind that and whatnot, and uh, some of the things that you would want to do is with code, because you know by default, these stairs are not necessarily to code if you're talking about an egress stair or an exit stair or something like that. So that will do it for this video. We looked at the real basics and defaults of stairs, uh, how to model them and kind of what we would expect to see and some of the basics options that we have uh, to work with stairs just on a default easy level. And in the future, we're going to look at other things that we can do. In the future, we will look at everything else that we need to do so we can really have a full advanced playlist of videos for stairs. So I'd highly recommend checking those out because they will be coming very soon. And if you did happen to learn something, which I hope you did, if, if nothing else, this is just a good introduction to stairs, then please demolish that like button and consider subscribing. It helps me out so very much. I will see you in the next Revit video. Have a wonderful day and thank you very much for watching.